Welcome to the second episode of the Modular Clubhouse. My name is Jesper and this is the Volker Keys. So before we actually dive into the to, into the details and make some music on the Volker Keys, I'd like to t- again put this all in perspective on how this has helped me to embark upon my modular journey. Um, maybe good to mention is that I've got a great feedback on the first episode and also to the introduction video. Uh, already some great pieces of advice. There is some Eurorack gear on its way, so I'm ready to get started. So if you have any sort of advice, tips or tricks, let me know. I'll uh, do the best I can to listen to it and to, uh, well, to make the best of it as well. So without further ado, let's dive into the Korg Volker Keys. So let's have a closer look, shall we? So the first thing you're going to notice is that this is a very small machine. Um, the keybet right there is of course meant to be played, but you either need to have had years of professional piano or keyboard training, or you need to have exceptionally small hands. I have neither. So one of the first things I added to this is a well a MIDI keyboard that you connect to this port right there. Um, to give a clear indication of the size, I'm going to use the internet standard unit of measurement, the banana. So this is approximately one banana wide and two thirds of a banana high. There you have it. So other than that, let's quickly run through the actual user interface. So you can use the keypad, of course, for playing notes, but you can also use these for things like selection of the, well, the memory slots, the LFO settings, step trigger, metronome, you name it. And then here on the left-hand side, you have your octave selector and you've got your voice selector. Personally, I prefer the polyphonic one and the fifth, because that adds some of those nice chords already. And the fun thing is, of course, this is part of my journey, right? So when I bought this, the only experience I had with synthesizers was putting together my Korg NTS-1, but I didn't know for the love of, of life what a VCO, VCF, LFO, or EG was. So I truly had to figure that out as I went along. And now, of course, those core concepts are so important for my Eurorack journey as well. So it is something that I need to remember that this is that this device is also responsible for me embarking on this journey. Without this machine, I wouldn't have done that. So again, a nice piece of uh, Jesper Eurorack history. So. As said, you've got some nice VCO settings. Yeah, the filter on this is um, is nice and fat, I would say. Uh, the LFO is nice to play to play with. It can add some tremolo, but you can also use it as a ratchet. Um, the e, the envelope is ADSR, even though you have to share the decay and release on one knob. Um, on the right hand side, you have your control for your delay and sorry for your feedback and time and your tempo and your volume and your actual control there, of course. So without further ado, let's uh, make some noise with this puppy. Here we go, connect that and turn it on. And you're immediately greeted by this boot up sequence. And I love that little LED dance that they do. And then we can actually have a look and see what this sounds like. Turn the volume up, there you go. And you immediately notice that I hit two notes at the same time, right? So that's the thing I was t- telling you about. So you have this, and if you go all the way down, you have this gritty, deep, fat sound to it. Especially if you then throw in the actual filter on top of that. It's so nice to play with. It's it's a dream come true. So what I like to do is I just want to turn on record mode and start playing something, something like this. So you now have a nice bass and you can then add. And it's 
starts to sound a bit musical, right? Let's uh, remove that and let's grab my trusty MIDI Plus X2 to the mix. So let's place that there and let's connect it. I love this device. There we go. And you can now already start to see, let's move the Fulcrum back into the show, how you can start playing with this and just start making the chord add something to it and the great thing of course is it will quantize it to the rhythm so you don't have to worry if something is exactly spot on it'll do that for you so even for noobs like me it's so easy to make some music with this so i can just keep on just add something to it not happy throw it away and start again build up something so even without any sort of musical training any sort of notion of music theory you can already start to make something that's already hits home on an emotional level I, I just love that I'm now capable of building something like this and this device truly enabled me to do that Volker Keys. I'm just going to give you a listen. So there you have it, the Korg Volker Keys. It's a great little device. It's going to set you back 130 euros, 130 dollars, probably the uh, same equivalent in pound sterling as well. And well, if you can pick up one of these used for a nice price, I would recommend everyone to do that. Um, if you need to pay full for it, consider whether or not you should be getting a, well, a larger device. But for those of you like me who love to have small gadgets and love to have something that is absolutely not a toy, but a serious music device, a musical instrument, grab this one. You won't be sorry. Um, other than that, I have to say thanks again for everyone's time. Hope you enjoyed this. I would like to ask everyone to like and subscribe. And if you have any feedback, leave it in the comments below. Even if you have, well, I would always recommend to put constructive criticisms there. Uh, but if you have any criticisms, put them there as well. Thanks again. Take care.
Cheers. Cheers.